I hope to put this on autopilot here to begin to say a few things. This is about corruption, not political corruption. Even though we're going through a period of extreme political corruption in this uh, period, June it is, 2019, I'm really going to talk about digital corruption, and that's what, uh, that's what I want to talk about. It happened by, I had a lot of artwork, various visual things that I had done, done paintings, prints, drawings, photographs, on a flash drive, and somehow, and I don't know how, these things got digitally corrupted. I'd like to know how, because a lot of these images are really Im interesting, and I don't know how it happened. If I knew how it happened, I'd like to, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of institute that kind of corruption to make it happen. So, uh, this is just kind of a rather inelegant, inelegant introduction to uh, digital corruption in artwork. And what I want to do is slide backwards just a little bit and see if we can go to the beginning. And I'd like to talk about some of this stuff if we can do this. Okay, what you'll notice, this was an image that had a lot that is missing in the lower part. For some reasons that I don't know or understand, the corruption came from the lower part and worked up. And you'll see that in a lot of the uh, images that we see. This was the old chapel at the ridge, Chestnut Ridge, Pennsylvania, owned by St. Vincent. St. Vincent Monastery, Archabbey College. This is one of the paintings that I did a good number of years ago. It was a scene out my window where I lived. I was living in an old factory, developing the place as living, working, exhibiting space for artists. And I did a painting out the window. This is the corrupted version of it. Uh, that goes to St. Vincent at La Trobe. It was the old print shop. That doorway was actually up above at the, at the larger buildings. It was an entrance to the uh, places, the monastery, the old student chapel. And when the, uh, the newer the newer choir chapel and refectory were built, this had to be taken out and was brought down and, you know, used in the new uh, building. This is an image I did. It's a combination of a photographic image over here and a hand-drawn image over here. I found an Altoona in the eight, 1970s. That, that's the uncorrupted version of it. That, that's the factory. This, this image is totally corrupted. The only thing that's not corrupted is what's above this line right here. All this stuff up here, down here, went bad. But it was a factory that I was living in in the uh, 19, late 1980s. And I developed it as living, working studio space for artists. A lot of people were living there when I was done. And that's the image without visual corruption. That's someone else living there, Grabeo Gräfen von Berenstorff. And it's interesting how these things, these visual corruption things happen. This, this, is the, what it, this is what was corrupted. That's the uncorrupted image. From that uncorrupted image, I made a woodcut, which you see right here. This is something that comes from Brooklyn when I was living there in the early 1970s. Uh, a play on the idea of the Grim Reaper. I transferred that somehow in my mind into the idea of the Grim Sweeper going about with her electric reaper 
the uh, the vacuum cleaner. This is the uncorrupted version of that. Now this isn't the whole total image that was corrupted. This is just a detail of it. This was in the railroad yards in Crescent, Pennsylvania. Crescent was where I had my first memories. I first became aware of anything in the 1940s when I was two or three years old. That's the whole image. My grandfather worked out of the yards there. Other relatives of mine worked on there. A great grandfather of mine. My godfather worked down in the yards down there cleaning locomotives when he was 16 years old. My uncle Ad worked out of there as a fireman in the old steam locomotives. This is from Brooklyn, 1973. Richard Bjorklund. He was going to Pratt, as I was also. This is the corrupted version. You see what corruption does. You, you'll see a uncorrupted image. That's the uncorrupted image that I drew of him. Now this goes back to the 1960s, back to St. Vincent at Lake Trobe, Pennsylvania. And the whole lower part of this, you'll see, is destroyed or enhanced, depending on your point of view. The, the corruption of this flash drive somehow came from the bottom and worked up. I'll show you the uncorrupted version. It was a volleyball game. That's no digital corruption intervening at all. Uh, that was on the back porch of a house I was living in, in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, in the 1980s, Grove Street. Now I'll show you the uncorrupted version. That's the way it looked bef before visual corruption took over. Spend a lot of time on that back porch. This is a corrupted version. You see the corruption coming up from the bottom, bottom and working up of something that I did not do myself. Uh, this was most likely a student's design project. That, that's, that's what I found. I, I found this literally in the gutter on East 7th Street in New York. New York City and Manhattan, most likely a design student taking the design course was coming home and threw the thing away because he had probably been berated by his professor that it wasn't what the what the guy wanted. But I liked it. I mean, I thought it was nice. You know, I thought it shouldn't be thrown away. And I picked it up and took care of it. Now this is up at Seton Hill in Greensburg. And it's a uh, it's a woodcut, and you can see the the corruption coming up from the bottom. And we'll take a look at the uh, uncorrupted version. It was a woodcut done, oh maybe in the 1990s. And after it was done as a woodcut, I put a little bit of color on it just by hand. Now this is a corrupted version of a photograph, a black and white photograph of one of the old, one of the remains of the old buildings at St. Vincent. It was the brewery. That's, that's what it was. They destroyed this. It was destroyed by a fire in the 1930s. And then later, for reasons I have no uh, idea why, they destroyed this nice old these old structures, they were causing no trouble, but they were destroyed. But I, I got this photograph before they were destroyed. Now, I don't want to pretend that I have a clue what this is. It's one of the, one of the corrupted visions, or one of the corrupted images of an artwork that I was working on. And I don't have a clue what it was. It's just totally indistinguishable. Here we go again, you know, uh, whatever it was, not a clue. I'm glad I did it, whatever it was, but I don't know what it was. Now this was the, my medicine cabinet in the bathroom 
that I had in the uh, factory, the old factory at Grapeville, where I developed living, working, exhibiting space for, for artists. That was in the backyard in Greensburg where I lived, 621 Grove Street, looks like March 30th, 1998. I was sitting on the back porch. The corruption was coming up from the bottom and it destroyed this much of it. The rest of it is pretty much saved. September of 2013, you can see the corruption came up and destroyed it up to this point. Above that point, it's, it's okay. That's that courtyard. I think we've seen that previously. Uh, this is a corrupt form of uh, a non-objective painting I was working on. That was an old fire truck. There was a building where I lived in Washington County as artists and residents in the 1990s. It was uh, called Moon Lorne, Malcolm Parcell's old house. Malcolm Parcell was an old Washington County, Pennsylvania painter. One of mine. Okay, maybe we've gone far enough. This is one that uh, I did at that factory I was talking about. This is the corruption coming up, which I had nothing to do with, but I think it makes it a lot better painting than I was able to do. And I think at this point, I'm gonna push F11 and we'll shut down and we'll see you for another one.